John Henry Dock Holliday, August 14, 1851, November 8, 1887, was an American gambler, gunfighter, and dentist, and a good friend of Wyatt Earp. He is most well known for his role as a temporary deputy marshal in the events leading up to and following the gunfight at the O.K. Corral. At age 21, Holliday earned a degree in dentistry from the Pennsylvania College of Dental Surgery. He set up practice in Atlanta, Georgia, but he was soon diagnosed with tuberculosis, the same disease that had claimed his mother when he was 15. Hoping the climate in the American Southwest would ease his symptoms, he moved to that region and became a gambler, a reputable profession in Arizona in that day. Over the next few years, he reportedly had several confrontations. While in Texas, he saved Wyatt Earp's life and they became friends. In 1880, he joined Earp in Las Vegas, New Mexico and then rode with him to Prescott, Arizona, and then Tombstone. In Tombstone, local outlaw cowboys repeatedly threatened him and spread rumors that he had robbed a stage. On October 26, 1881, Holiday was deputized by Tombstone City Marshal Virgil Earp. The lawman attempted to disarm five cowboys, which resulted in the gun fight at the O.K. Corral. Following the tombstone shootout, Virgil Earp was maimed by hidden assailants and Morgan Earp was murdered. Unable to obtain justice in the courts, Wyatt Earp took matters into his own hands. As the recently appointed deputy U.S. Marshal, Earp formally deputized Holiday, among others. As a federal posse, they pursued the outlaw cowboys they believed were responsible. They found Frank Stilwell lying in wait as Virgil boarded a train for California and killed him. The local sheriff issued a warrant for the arrest of five members of the posse, including Holiday. The federal posse killed three others during late March and early April, 1882, before they rode to the New Mexico Territory. Wyatt Earp learned of an extradition request for Holiday and arranged for Colorado Governor Frederick Walker Pitkin to deny Holiday's extradition. Holiday spent the few remaining years of his life in Colorado, and died of tuberculosis in his bed at the Glenwood Springs Hotel at age 36. Holiday's colorful life and character have been depicted in many books and portrayed by well-known actors in numerous movies and television series. Since his death, researchers have concluded that, contrary to popular myth-making, Holiday killed only one or two men. Equals equals early life and education equals equals. Holiday was born in Griffin, Georgia, to Henry Burroughs Holiday and Alice Jane McKee Holiday. He was of English and Scottish ancestry. His father served in the Mexican-American War and the Civil War as a Confederate. When the war ended, he brought home an adopted son named Francisco and taught Holiday to shoot. Holiday was baptized at the First Presbyterian Church of Griffin in 1852. In 64, his family moved to Valdosta, Georgia, where his mother died of tuberculosis on September 16, 1866. The same disease killed his adopted brother. Three months after his wife's death, his father married Rachel Martin. Holiday attended the Valdosta Institute, where he received a classical education in rhetoric, grammar, mathematics, history, and languages, principally Latin, but some French and ancient Greek. In 1870, 19-year-old Holiday left home for Philadelphia. On March 1, 1872, at age 20, he received his Doctor of Dental Surgery degree from the Pennsylvania College of Dental Surgery, now part of the University of Pennsylvania School of Dental Medicine. Holiday graduated five months before his 21st birthday, so the school held his degree until he turned 21, the minimum age required to practice dentistry equals equals begins dental practice equals equals holiday moved to st louis missouri so he could work as an assistant for a classmate a jameson futches jr less than four months later at the end of july he relocated to atlanta where he joined a dental practice he lived with his uncle and his family so he could begin to build up his dental practice a few weeks before holiday's birthday dentist arthur c ford advertised in the atlanta papers that holiday would substitute for him while he was attending dental meetings equals 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 fight in Georgia equals equals equals. Holiday was reported to have been involved in a shooting on the Withlacoochee River, Georgia, in 1873. At age 22, Holiday went with some friends to their favorite swimming hole, but discovered it was occupied by a group of African-American youths. Holiday and his companions told them to leave, but they refused. Accounts of this event vary. Holiday left and returned carrying either a shotgun or a pistol and started shooting, either at or over the heads of the black youths. Some of the African-Americans may have shot back. There are no contemporaneous accounts of the incident. Some family members and friends allege that Holiday killed one to three of the youths, but other members of Holiday's family dispute those accounts. Equals 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 diagnosed with tuberculosis equals equals equals. Shortly after beginning his dental practice, Holiday was diagnosed with tuberculosis. He was given only a few months to live, but was told that a drier and warmer climate might slow the deterioration of his health. After Dr. Ford's return in September, Holiday left for Dallas, Texas, the last big 
Lake City before the uncivilized western frontier. Equals 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 move to Dallas equals equals equals. When he arrived in Dallas, Holiday partnered with a friend of his father's, Dr. John A. Seagar. They won awards for their dental work at the annual fair of the North Texas Agricultural, Mechanical, and Bloodstock Association at the Dallas County Fair. They received all three awards, Best Set of Teeth in Gold, Best in Vulcanized Rubber, and Best Set of Artificial Teeth and Dental Wear. Their office was located along Elm Street, between Market and Austin Streets. They dissolved the practice on March 2, 1874, and Holiday opened his own practice over the Dallas County Bank at the corner of Main and Lamar Streets. His tuberculosis caused coughing spells at inopportune times, and his dental practice slowly declined. Meanwhile, Holiday found he had some skill at gambling, and he soon relied on it as his principal income source. On May 12, 1874, Holiday and 12 others were indicted in Dallas for illegal gambling. He was arrested in Dallas in January 1875 after trading gunfire with a saloon keeper, Charles Austin, but no one was injured and he was found not guilty. He moved his offices to Denison, Texas, but after being found guilty of, and fined for, gaming in Dallas, he decided to leave the state. Equals equals heads farther west equals equals. Holiday headed toward Denver, following the stage routes and gambling at towns and army outposts along the way. During the summer of 1875, he settled in Denver under the alias Tom Mackey and found work as a faro dealer for John A. Babb's Theater Comic at 357 Blake Street. While there, he got in an argument with Bud Ryan, a well-known and tough gambler. Drawing knives, they fought, and Holiday left Ryan seriously wounded. Holiday left after hearing about gold being discovered in Wyoming, and on February 5, 1876, he relocated to Cheyenne. He found work as a dealer for Babs' partner, Thomas Miller, who owned a saloon called the Bella Union Saloon. In the fall of 1876, Miller moved the Bella Union to Deadwood, site of the gold rush in the Dakota Territory, and Holiday went with him. In 1877, Holiday returned to Cheyenne, and then Denver, and eventually to Kansas where he visited an aunt. When he left Kansas, he went to Breckenridge, Texas, where he gambled. On July 4, 1877, he had a disagreement with gambler Henry Kahn, and Holiday beat him repeatedly with his walking stick. Both men were arrested and fined, but Kahn was not finished. Later that same day, he shot and seriously wounded the unarmed Holiday. On July 7, the Dallas Weekly Herald incorrectly reported that Holiday had been killed. His cousin, George Henry Holiday, moved west to take care of him during his recovery. Once healed, Holiday relocated to Fort Griffin, Texas. While dealing cards at John Shancy's saloon, he met Mary Catherine Big Nose. Kate Haroni, a dance hall woman and occasional prostitute. Her nose was a prominent feature. Tough, stubborn and fearless, she was educated, but chose to work as a prostitute because she liked her independence. She is the only woman with whom Holiday is known to have had a relationship. Equals equals be friends Wyatt Earp equals equals. In October 1877, outlaw Dave Rudabaugh robbed a Santa Fe Railroad construction camp and fled south. Wyatt Earp was given a temporary commission as deputy U.S. Marshal, and he left Dodge City following Rudabaugh over four 400 miles, 640 kilometers, to Fort Griffin, a frontier town on the clear fork of the Brazos River. Earp went to the Beehive Saloon, the largest in town and owned by John Shancy, whom Earp had known since he was 21. Shancy told Earp that Rudabaugh had passed through town earlier in the week, but he did not know where he was headed. Shancy suggested Earp ask gambler Doc Holliday, who had played cards with Rudabaugh. Holliday told Earp that Rudabaugh was headed back to Kansas. After about a month in Fort Griffin, Earp returned to Fort Clark and in early 1870, he went to Dodge City, where he became the assistant city marshal, serving under Charlie Bassett. During the summer of 1878, Holiday and Haroni also arrived in Dodge City, where they stayed at Deacon Cox's boarding house as Dr. and Mrs. John H. Holiday. Holiday sought to practice dentistry again, and ran an ad in the local paper, Dentistry. John H. Holiday, dentist, very respectfully offers his professional services to the citizens of Dodge City and surrounding county during the summer. Office at Room No. 24 Dodge House where satisfaction is not given, money will be refunded. According to accounts of the following event reported by Glenn Boyer in I Married Wyatt Earp, Earp had run two cowboys, Toby Driscoll and Ed Morrison, out of Wichita earlier in 1878. During the summer, the two cowboys, accompanied by another two dozen men, rode into Dodge and shot up the town while galloping down Front Street. They entered the Long Branch Saloon, vandalized the room, and harassed the customers. Hearing the commotion,
commotion, Earp burst through the front door, and before he could react, a large number of cowboys were pointing their guns at him. In another version, there were only three to five cowboys. Holiday was playing cards in the back of the room and upon seeing the commotion, drew his weapon and forced the men to put their weapons down, thus rescuing Earp from a bad situation. No account of any such confrontation was reported by any of the Dodge City newspapers at the time. Whatever actually happened, Earp credited Holiday with saving his life that day, and Earp and he became friends. Equals equals other known confrontations equals equals. Holiday was still practicing dentistry from his room in Fort Griffin, Texas, and in Dodge City, Kansas. In an 1878 Dodge newspaper advertisement, he promised money back for less than complete customer satisfaction, but this was the last known time that he worked as a dentist. He gained the nickname Doc during this period. Holiday reportedly engaged in a gunfight with a bartender named Charles White. Miguel Otero, who would later become governor of New Mexico Territory, said he was present when Holiday walked into the saloon with a cocked revolver in his hand and challenged White to settle an outstanding argument. White was serving customers at the time and took cover behind a bar, then started shooting at Holiday with his revolver. During the fight, Holiday shot White in the scalp, but there are no contemporaneous newspaper reports of the incident. Bat Masterson reportedly said that Holiday was in Jacksonboro, South Carolina, and got into a gunfight with an unnamed soldier whom Holiday shot and killed. Historian Gary L. Roberts found a record for a private Robert Smith who had been shot and killed by an unknown assailant, but Holiday was never linked to the death. Equals equals move to New Mexico equals equals. Holiday developed a reputation for his skill with a gun, as well as with the cards. In September 1879, Wyatt Earp resigned as assistant marshal in Dodge City and decided to join his brother Virgil in the Arizona Territory. A few days before Christmas in 1878, Holiday and Horony arrived in Las Vegas, New Mexico. The 22 hot springs near the town were favored by individuals with tuberculosis for their alleged healing properties. Doc opened a dental practice and continued gambling as well, but the winter was unseasonably cold and business was slow. The New Mexico Territorial Legislature passed a bill banning gambling within the territory with surprising ease. On March 8, 1879, Holiday was indicted for keeping a gaming table and was fined $25. The ban on gambling combined with extreme low temperatures persuaded him to return to Dodge City for a few months. In September 1879, Wyatt Earp resigned as assistant marshal in Dodge City. Accompanied by his common-law wife Maddie Blaylock, his brother Jim, and his wife Bessie, they left for Arizona Territory. Holiday and Horony returned to Las Vegas where they met the Earps. The group arrived in Prescott in November. Equals 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 Royal Gorge War equals equals equals. In Dodge City, Holiday joined a team being formed by Deputy U.S. Marshal Bat Masterson. Both were striving to be the first to provide rail access to the boom town of Leadville, Colorado. Royal Gorge was a bottleneck along the Arkansas, too narrow for both railroads to pass through, and with no other reasonable access to the South Park area. Doc remained there for about two and a half months. The federal intervention Convention prompted the so-called Treaty of Boston to end the fighting. The DNRGW completed its line and leased it for use by the Santa Fe. Holiday took home a share of a $10,000 bribe paid by the DNRGW to Masterson to give up their possession of the Santa Fe Roundhouse, and returned to Las Vegas where Horony had remained. Equals 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 build saloon in Las Vegas equals equals equals. The Santa Fe Company built tracks to Las Vegas, New Mexico, but bypassed the city by about a mile. A new town was built up near the tracks and prostitution and gambling flourished there. On July 19, 1879, Holiday and John Joshua Webb, former lawman and gunman, were seated in a saloon. Former U.S. Army Scout Mike Gordon tried to persuade one of the saloon girls, a former girlfriend, to leave town with him. She refused and Gordon stormed outside. He began firing into the building, and a few hours later, Gordon was found mortally wounded outside. Some attribute the shooting to Holiday, but no conclusive evidence of who killed Gordon was ever found. The next day, Holiday paid $372.50 to a carpenter to build a clapboard building to house the Doc Holiday saloon with John Webb as his partner. While in town, he was fined twice for keeping a gambling device, and again for carrying a deadly weapon. Equals equals move to Arizona Territory equals equals. It appeared Holiday and Horony were settling into life in Las Vegas when Wyatt Earp arrived on October. October 18, 1879, with news of the boom going on in Tombstone, Arizona Territory. Holiday and Horony joined Wyatt and his wife Maddie, as well as Jim Earp and his wife and stepdaughter, as they traveled the next day to Prescott, Arizona Territory. They arrived within a few weeks and went straight to the home of Constable Virgil Earp and his wife Allie. Holiday and Horony checked into a hotel and when Wyatt, Virgil, and James Earp with their wives left for Tombstone, Holiday remained in Prescott, where he thought the gambling opportunities were better. Holiday finally joined the Earps in Tombstone in September 1880. Some accounts report that the Earp sent for 
Holiday for assistance with dealing with the outlaw Cochise County Cowboys. Holiday quickly became embroiled in the local politics and violence that led up to the gunfight at the OK Corral in October 1881. Equals 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 accused in stagecoach robbery equals equals equals. Holiday and Horony had many fights. After a particularly nasty, drunken argument, Holiday kicked her out. County Sheriff Johnny Bean and Milk Joy saw an opportunity and exploited the situation. They plied Horony with more booze and suggested to her a way to get even with Holiday. She signed an affidavit implicating Holiday in an attempted robbery and murder of passengers aboard a Kinnear and Company stagecoach on March 15, 1881 carrying $26,000 in silver bullion, about $645,248 in today's dollars. Three cowboys had stopped the stage between Tombstone and Benson, Arizona and robbed it. Bob Paul, who had run for Pima County Sheriff and was contesting the election he lost due to ballot stuffing, was riding along as the Wells Fargo shotgun messenger. He had taken the reins and driver's seat in Contention City because the usual driver, a well-known and popular man named Eli Bud Philpott, was ill. Philpott was riding shotgun. Paul fired his shotgun and emptied his revolver at the robbers, wounding a cowboy, later identified as Bill Leonard, in the groin. Philpott and passenger Peter Rorig, riding in the rear dicky seat, were both shot and killed. Holiday was a good friend of Leonard, a former watchmaker from New York. Based on the affidavit sworn by Horony, Judge Wells Spicer issued an arrest warrant for Holiday. Rumors flew that Holiday had taken part in the shooting and murders. Tombstone saloon owner Milk Joyce disarmed Holiday one day when he got into an altercation with fellow gambler Johnny Tyler. Later that that day, Holiday heard that Joyce was spreading rumors that Holiday had taken part in the robbery. Drunk, Holiday returned to Joyce's saloon. He insulted Joyce and demanded his firearm back. Joyce refused and threw him out, but Holiday came back carrying a revolver and started firing. Joyce pulled out a pistol and Holiday shot the revolver out of Joyce's hand putting a bullet through his palm. When Joyce's bartender, Parker, tried to grab his gun, Holiday wounded him in the toe. Joyce picked up his pistol and pistol whipped Holiday, knocking him out. The Earps found witnesses who could attest to Holiday's location elsewhere at the time of the stagecoach murders, and Horony sobered up, revealing that Bean and Joyce had influenced her to sign a document she did not understand. With the cowboy plot revealed, Spicer freed Holiday. The district attorney threw out the charges, labeling them ridiculous. Holiday gave Horony some money and put her on a stage out of town equals 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 gunfight at the OK Corral equals 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 on October 26, 1881, Virgil Earp was both Deputy U.S. Marshal and Tom Stone's City Police Chief. He received reports that cowboys were armed in violation of the city ordinance that required them to deposit their weapons at a saloon or stable soon after arriving in town. The cowboys had repeatedly threatened the Earps and Holiday. Fearing trouble, Virgil temporarily deputized Holiday and sought backup from his brothers Wyatt and Morgan. Virgil retrieved a short coach gun from the Wells Fargo office and the four men went to find the Cowboys. On Fremont Street, they ran into Cochise County Sheriff Bean, who told them or implied that he had disarmed the Cowboys. To avoid alarming citizens and less intention when disarming the Cowboys, Virgil gave the coach gun to Holiday so he could conceal it under his long coat. Virgil Earp took Holiday's walking stick. The lawman found the Cowboys in a narrow 15 to 20 ft wide lot on Fremont Street, between Fly's boarding house and the Harwood house. Holiday was boarding at Fly's house and he possibly thought they were waiting there to kill him. Different witnesses offered varying stories about Holiday's actions. Cowboys witnesses testified that Holiday first pulled out a nickel-plated pistol he was known to carry, while others reported he first fired a longer, bronze-colored gun possibly the coach gun. Holiday killed Tom McClowry with a shotgun blast in the side of his chest. Holiday was grazed by a bullet possibly fired by Frank McClowry who was on Fremont Street at the time. He supposedly challenged Holiday, yelling, I've got you now. Holiday is reported to have replied, blaze away, you're a daisy if you have. McClowry died of shots to his stomach and behind his ear. Holiday may have also wounded Billy Clanton. One analysis of the fight gives credit to either Holiday or Morgan Earp for firing the fatal shot at McClowry on Fremont Street. Holiday they may have been on McClory's right and Morgan Earp on his left. McClory was shot in the right side of the head, so Holiday is often given credit for shooting him. However, Wyatt Earp had shot McClory in his torso earlier, a shot that alone could have killed him. McClory would have turned away after having been hit and Wyatt could have placed a second shot in his head. A 30-day-long preliminary hearing found that the Earps and Holiday had acted within their duties as lawmen, although this did not pacify Ike Clanton. Equals 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 Earp Bendetta right equals equals equals. The situation in 
and Tombstone soon grew worse when Virgil Earp was ambushed and permanently injured in December 1881. Following that, Morgan Earp was ambushed and killed in March 1882. After Morgan's murder, Virgil Earp and many remaining members of the Earp families fled town. Holiday and Wyatt Earp stayed in Tombstone to exact retribution on Ike Clanton and the corrupt members known as the Cowboys. Several Cochise County Cowboys were identified by witnesses as suspects in the shooting of Virgil Earp on December 27, 1881, and the assassination of Morgan Earp on March 19, 1882. Some circumstantial evidence also pointed to their involvement. Wyatt Earp had been appointed Deputy U.S. Marshal after Virgil was maimed. He deputized Holiday, Warren Earp, Sherman McMaster, and Turkey Creek Jack Johnson. Although sick with tuberculosis, Holiday managed to ride with the posse into the Badlands in search of the Cowboys. At that time, Holiday said farewell to Horony for good. The Earp party guarded Virgil Earp and Alley on their way to the train for California. In Tucson, the group spotted an armed Frank Stilwell and Ike Clanton, whom they thought were lying in wait to kill Virgil. On March 20, 1882, Frank Stilwell's body was found at dawn alongside the railroad tracks, riddled with buckshot and gunshot wounds. Wyatt credited himself as the one who fatally shot Stilwell with a shotgun. Other bullets placed into him may have been fired by Holiday. Tucson Justice of the Peace Charles Meyer issued arrest warrants for five of the Earp party, including Holiday. On March 21, they returned briefly to Tombstone, where they were joined by Texas Jack Vermillion and possibly others. Wyatt deputized the men who rode with him. On the morning of March 22, a portion of the Earp posse including Wyatt, Warren, Holiday, Sherman McMaster, and Turkey Creek Johnson rode about 10 miles 16 kilometers, east to Pete Spence's ranch to a wood-cutting camp located off the Chiricahua Road, below the South Pass of the Dragoon Mountains. According to Theodore Judah, who witnessed events at the wood camp, the Earp posse arrived around 11 a.m. and asked for Spence and Florentino Indian Charlie Cruz. They learned Spence was in jail and that Cruz was cutting wood nearby. They followed the direction Judah indicated and he soon heard a dozen or so shots. When Cruz did not return the next morning, Judah went looking for him and found his body full of bullet holes. Equals 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 gunfight at Iron Springs equals equals equals. Two days later, Earp's posse traveled to Iron Springs located in the Whetstone Mountains, where they expected to meet Charlie Smith, who was supposed to be bringing $1,000 cash from their supporters in Tombstone. With Wyatt and Holiday in the lead, the six lawmen surmounted a small rise overlooking the springs. They surprised eight cowboys camping near the springs. Curly Bill recognized Wyatt Earp in the lead and immediately drew his shotgun and fired at Earp. The other cowboys also drew their weapons and began firing. Wyatt Earp and Holiday left the only record of the fight. Earp dismounted, shotgun in hand. Texas Jack Vermillion's horse was shot and fell on him pinning his leg and wedging his rifle underneath. Lacking cover, Holiday, Johnson, and McMaster retreated. Earp returned Curly Bill's gunfire with his own shotgun and shot him in the chest, nearly cutting him in half according to Earp's later account. Curly Bill fell into the water by the edge of the spring and lay dead. The cowboys fired a number of shots at the Earp party, but the only casualty was Vermilion's horse, which was killed. Wyatt's longcoat was punctured by bullets on both sides. Another bullet struck his boot heel and his saddle horn was hit as well, burning the saddle hide and narrowly missing Wyatt. Wyatt. Firing his pistol, Wyatt shot Johnny Barnes in the chest and Milt Hicks in the arm. Vermillion tried to retrieve his rifle wedged in the scabbard under his fallen horse, exposing himself to the cowboy's gunfire. Doc Holliday helped him gain cover. Wyatt had trouble remounting his horse because his cartridge belt had slipped down around his legs. He was finally able to get on his horse and retreat. McMaster was grazed by a bullet that cut through the straps of his field glasses. Equals 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 Earp and Holiday part company equals equals equals. Holiday and four other members of the posse were still faced with warrants for Stillwell's death. The group elected to leave the Arizona Territory for New Mexico Territory and then on to Colorado. Wyatt and Holiday, who had been fast friends had a serious disagreement and parted ways in Albuquerque. According to a letter written by former New Mexico Territory Governor Miguel Otero, Wyatt and Holiday were eating at Fat Charlie's The Retreat Restaurant in Albuquerque when Holiday said something about Earp becoming a damned Jew boy. Earp became angry and left. Earp was staying with a prominent businessman, Henry N. Jaffa, who was also president of New Albuquerque's Board of Trade. Jaffa was Jewish, and based on the letter Earp had, while staying in Jaffa's home, he honored Jewish tradition by touching the mezuzah upon entering his home. According to Otero's letter, Jaffa told him, Earp's woman was a Jewess. Earp's anger at Holiday's racial slur may indicate that the relationship between Josephine Marcus and Wyatt Earp was more serious at the time than is commonly known. Holiday and Dan Tipton arrived in Pueblo, Colorado in late April 1882. Equals equals arrives in Colorado equals equals.
On May 15, 1882, Holliday was arrested in Denver on the Tucson warrant for murdering Frank Stilwell. When Wyatt Earp learned of the charges, he feared his friend Holliday would not receive a fair trial in Arizona. Earp asked his friend Bat Masterson, then chief of police of Trinidad, Colorado, to help get Holliday released. Masterson drew up bunco charges against Holliday. Holliday's extradition hearing was set for May 30th. Late in the evening of May 29th, Masterson sought help getting an appointment with Colorado Governor Frederick Walker Pitkin. He he contacted E.D. Cowan, Capitol reporter for the Denver Tribune, who held political sway in town. Cowan later wrote, he submitted proof of the criminal design upon Holiday's life. Late as the hour was, I called on Pitkin. His legal reasoning was that the extradition papers for Holiday contained faulty legal language, and that there was already a Colorado warrant out for Holiday, including the bunco charge that Masterson had fabricated. Pitkin was persuaded by the evidence presented by Masterson and refused to honor Arizona's extradition request. Masterson took Holiday to Pueblo, where he was released on bond two weeks after his arrest. Holiday and Wyatt met again in June 1882 in Gunnison after Wyatt helped to keep his friend from being convicted on murder charges regarding Frank Stilwell. Holiday was able to see his old friend Wyatt one last time in the late winter of 1886, where they met in the lobby of the Windsor Hotel. Sadie Marcus described the skeletal Holiday as having a continuous cough and standing on unsteady legs equals 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 death of Johnny Ringo equals 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 on July 14, 1882 Johnny Ringo was found dead in the crotch of a large tree in West Turkey Creek Valley near Chiricahua Peak Arizona Territory he had a bullet hole in his right temple and a revolver was found hanging from a finger of his hand in his book One Married Wyatt Earp editor Glenn Boyer wrote that Josephine Marcus Earp said Wyatt Earp and Holiday returned to Arizona to kill Ringo Josephine reported that Holiday killed Ringo with a rifle but this contradicts the coroner's finding that Ringo committed suicide, dying by a pistol shot at close range. Boyer's book is now recognized by ERP researchers as a hoax that cannot be relied upon. The newspaper in Salida, Colorado, reported that Holiday had arrived there on July 7, six days and 500 miles 800 kilometers, from where Ringo died. However, district court records from Pueblo County, Colorado, document that both Holiday and his attorney appeared in court on July 11, 14, and 18, 1882, making it impossible possible for them to have been in Arizona at the same time. In her book Doc Holiday, A Family Portrait, author Karen Holiday Tanner noted that the court record for July 11 indicated that he appeared in person, using the Latin legal phrase in propria persona or in his own person. She also described a writ of habeas corpus that was issued for Holiday on July 11. She speculated that he may not have been actually in Pueblo and that his attorney appeared on his behalf. Tanner asserts that the phrase was standard legal filler and does not prove that Holiday was physically present in court. Equals equals death and burial equals equals. Holiday spent his remaining days in Colorado. After a stay in Leadville, he suffered from the high altitude. He increasingly depended on alcohol and laudanum to ease the symptoms of tuberculosis, and his health and his skills as a gambler began to deteriorate. Holiday's last known confrontation took place in Hyman's Saloon in Leadville. Down to his last dollar, he had pawned his jewelry, and then borrowed $5 from Billy Allen, a bartender and special officer at the Monarch Saloon, which enabled Allen to carry a gun and make arrests within the saloon. When Allen demanded he be repaid, Holiday could not comply. He knew Allen was armed, and when Allen appeared ready to attack him, he shot him, wounding him in the arm. Holiday was arrested and put on trial. He claimed self-defense, noting that Allen outweighed him by 50 pounds and he feared for his life. A witness testified that Allen had been armed and in Hyman's earlier in the day apparently looking for Holiday. On March 28, 1885, the jury acquitted Holiday. Equals 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 final days equals equals equals. In 1887, prematurely gray and badly ailing, Holiday made his way to the Hotel Glenwood, near the hot springs of Glenwood Springs, Colorado. He hoped to take advantage of the reputed curative power of the waters, but the sulfurous fumes from the spring may have done his lungs more harm than good. As he lay dying, Holiday is reported to have asked the nurse attending him for a shot of whiskey. When she told him no, he looked at his bootless feet, amused. The nurses said that his last words were, this is funny. He always figured he would be killed someday with his boots on. Holiday died at 10 a.m. on November. November 8, 1887. He was 36. Wyatt Earp did not learn of Holiday's death until two months afterward. Horany later said that she attended to him in his final days, but it is doubtful that she was present. Equals 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 service equals equals equals. The Glenwood Springs Youth Chief of November 12, 1887, wrote in his obituary that Holiday had been baptized in the Catholic Church. This was based on correspondence written between Holiday and his cousin, Sister Mary Melanie, a Catholic nun. No baptismal record has been found in either street. 
Stevens Catholic Church in Glenwood Springs or at the Annunciation Catholic Church in nearby Leadville. Holiday's mother had been raised a Methodist and later joined a Presbyterian church, her husband's faith, but objected to the Presbyterian doctrine of predestination and reconverted to Methodism publicly before she died, saying that she wanted her son John to know what she believed. Holiday himself was later to say that he had joined a Methodist church in Dallas. At the end of his life, Holiday had struck up friendships with both a Catholic priest, Father E.T. Downey, and a Presbyterian minister, Rev. W.S. Randolph, in Glenwood Springs. When he died, Father Downey was out of town, and so Rev. Randolph presided over the burial at 4 p.m. on the same day that Holiday died. The services were reportedly attended by many friends. Equals 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 burial equals equals equals. Holiday is buried in Linwood Cemetery overlooking Glenwood Springs. Since Holiday died in November, the ground may have been frozen. Some modern authors such as Bob Bowes Bell speculate that it would have been impossible to transport him to the cemetery, which was only accessible by a difficult mountain road, or to dig a grave because the ground was frozen. Author Gary Roberts located evidence that other bodies were transported to the Linwood Cemetery at the same time of the month that year. Contemporary newspaper reports explicitly state that Holiday was buried in the Linwood Cemetery, but the exact location of his grave is uncertain. Equals equals public reputation equals equals. Publicly, Holiday could be as fierce as was needed for a gambling man to earn respect, and his reputation as a skilled gunfighter is generally agreed upon by historians. According to Tombstone resident George W. Parsons, Holiday told Johnny Ringo in January 1882, All I want of you is ten paces out in the street. Ringo and he were prevented from a gunfight by the Tombstone police, who arrested both. During the gunfight at the OK Corral, Holiday initially carried a shotgun and shot it and may have killed Tom McClowry. Holiday was grazed by a bullet bullet fired by Frank McClowry, and shot back. Holiday was also part of a group of men led by Wyatt Earp guarding Virgil Earp, who had been maimed in an ambush in January. Once in Tucson, they found Frank Stillwell in the rail yard, and Holiday may have been one of several men who shot him. Holiday joined Wyatt and other men as part of a federal posse who killed three other outlaw cowboys during the Earp Vendetta ride. Holiday reported that he had been arrested 17 times, four attempts had been made to hang him, and that he survived ambush five times. Equals 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 character equals equals equals. Throughout his lifetime, Holiday was known by many of his peers as a tempered, calm, southern gentleman. In an 1896 article, Wyatt Earp said, I found him a loyal friend and good company. In a newspaper interview, Holiday was once asked if his conscience ever troubled him. He is reported to have said, I coughed that up with my lungs, years ago. Equals 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 stabbings and shootings equals equals equals. Much of Holiday's violent reputation was nothing but rumors and self-promotion. However, he showed great skill in gambling and gun fights. His tuberculosis did not hamper his ability as a gambler and as a marksman. Holiday was ambidextrous. No contemporaneous newspaper accounts or legal records offer proof of the many unnamed men whom Holiday is credited with killing in popular folklore. The only men he is known to have killed are Mike Gordon in 1879 probably Tom McClowry in Tombstone, and possibly Frank Stillwell in Tucson. Some scholars argue that Holiday may have encouraged the stories about his reputation, although his record never supported those claims. In a March 1882 interview with the Arizona Daily Star, Virgil Earp told the reporter, There was something very peculiar about Doc. He was gentlemanly, a good dentist, a friendly man, and yet outside of us boys I don't think he had a friend in the territory. Tales were told that he had murdered men in different parts of the country, that he had robbed and committed all man of crimes, and yet when persons were asked how they knew it, they could only admit that it was hearsay, and that nothing of the kind could really be traced up to Doc's account. Equals 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 arrests and convictions equals equals equals. Biographer Karen Holiday Tanner found that Holiday had been arrested 17 times before his 1881 shootout in Tombstone. Only one arrest was for murder, which occurred in an 1879 shootout with Mike Gordon in New Mexico, for which he was acquitted. In the preliminary hearing following the gunfight at the OK. Corral, Judge Wells Spicer exonerated Holiday's actions as those of a duly appointed lawman. In Denver, the Arizona warrant against Holiday for Frank Stillwell's murder went unserved when the governor was persuaded by Trinidad Chief of Police Bat Masterson to release Holiday to his custody for bunco charges. Among his other arrests, Holiday pleaded guilty to two gambling charges, one charge of carrying a deadly weapon in the city, in connection with the argument with Ringo, and one misdemeanor assault and battery charge, for his shooting of Joyce and Parker. The others were all dismissed or returned 
returned as not guilty equals 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 alleged murder of Ed Bailey equals 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 Wyatt Earp recounted one event during which Holiday killed a fellow gambler named Ed Bailey. Earp and his common-law wife Maddie Blaylock were in Fort Griffin, Texas, during the winter of 1878, looking for gambling opportunities. Earp visited the saloon of his old friend from Cheyenne, John Chancy, and met Holiday at the Cattle Exchange. The story of Holiday killing Bailey first appeared nine years after Holiday's death in an 1896 interview with Wyatt Earp that was published in the San Francisco Inquirer. According to Earp, Holiday was playing poker with a well-liked local man named Ed Bailey. Holiday caught Bailey monkeying with the dead wood or the discard pile, which was against the rules. According to Earp, Holiday reminded Bailey to play poker, which was a polite way to caution him to stop cheating. When Bailey made the same move again, Holiday took the pot without showing his hand, which was his right under the rules. Bailey immediately went for his pistol, but Holiday whipped out a knife from his breast pocket and caught Bailey just below the brisket or upper chest. Bailey died and Holiday, new to town, was detained in his room at the Planters Hotel. In Stuart Lake's best-selling biography, Wyatt Earp, Frontier Marshal, 1931, Earp added to the story. He is quoted as saying that Holiday's girlfriend, Big Nose Kate Horany, devised a diversion. She procured a second pistol from a friend in town, removed a horse from its shed behind the hotel, and then set fire to the shed. Everyone but Holiday and the lawman guarding him ran to put out the fire, while she calmly walked in and tossed Holiday the second pistol. However, no contemporary records have been found of either Bailey's death or of the shed fire. In addition, Horany denied that Holiday killed a man named Bailey over a poker game, nor was he arrested and locked up in another hotel room. She laughed at the idea of a 116-pound woman, standing off a deputy, ordering him to throw up his hands, disarming him, rescuing her lover, and hustling him to the waiting ponies. Author and ERP expert Ben Trawick doubts that Holiday killed Bailey. He could find no newspaper articles or court records to support the story. He found evidence to support that Holiday was being held in his hotel room under guard, but for illegal gambling, and that the story of Horany starting a fire as a diversion to free him was true. The story about Bailey as told in San Francisco Inquirer interview of Earp was likely fabricated by the writer. Years later, Earp wrote, Of all the nonsensical guff which has been written around my life, there has been none more inaccurate or far-fetched than that which has dealt with Doc Holliday. After Holiday died, I gave a San Francisco newspaper reporter a short sketch of his life. Apparently the reporter was not satisfied. The sketch appeared in print with a lot of things added that never existed outside the reporter's imagination. Equals equals photos of Holiday equals equals. Three photos of unknown provenance are often reported to be of Holiday, some of them supposedly taken by C.S. Fly and Tombstone, but sometimes reported to have been taken in Dallas. Holiday lived in a rooming house in front of Fly's photography studio. Many individuals share similar facial features, and the faces of people who look radically different can look similar when viewed from certain angles. Because of this, most museum staff, knowledgeable researchers, and collectors require provenance or a documented history for an image to support physical similarities that might exist. Experts rarely offer even a tentative identification of new or unique images of famous people based solely on similarities shared with other known images. Equals equals legacy equals equals. Doc Holliday is one of the most recognizable figures in the American Old West, but he is most remembered for his friendship with Wyatt Earp and his role in the gunfight at the OK. Corral. Holiday's friendship with the lawman has been a staple of popular sidekicks in American Western culture, and Holiday himself became a stereotypical image of a deputy and a loyal companion in modern times. He is typically portrayed in films as being loyal to his friend Wyatt, whom he sticks with during the duo's greatest conflicts, such as the gunfight at the OK Corral and Earp's Vendetta, even with the ensuing violence and hardships which they both endured. Together with Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday has become a modern symbol of loyalty, brotherhood, and friendship. The Holiday birth home is marked with an historical marker located in Fayetteville, Georgia. A life-sized statue of Holiday and Earp by sculptor Dan Bates was dedicated by the Southern Arizona Transportation Museum at the restored historic railroad depot in Tucson, Arizona, on March 20, 2005, the 122nd anniversary of the killing of Frank Stilwell by Wyatt Earp. The statue stands at the approximate site of the shooting on the train platform. Doc Holiday Day are held yearly in Holiday's birthplace of Griffin, Georgia. Valdosta, Georgia held a Doc Holiday look-alike contest in January 2010, 
to coincide with its sesquicentennial celebration equals equals in popular culture equals equals holiday was nationally known during his life as a gambler and gunman the shootout at the ok corral is one of the most famous frontier stories in the american west and numerous western tv shows and movies have been made about it holiday is usually a prominent part of the story equals 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 documentary equals 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 in search of doc holiday 2016 equals 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 in film and television equals 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 actors who have portrayed holiday include caesar romero in frontier marshal 1939 walter houston played a very old holiday in the outlaw 1943 victor mature in my darling clementine directed by john ford with henry fonda as wyatt earp 1946 harry bartale in the 13th episode of the cbs radio program gun smoke july 19 1952 kim spaulding in the syndicated television series stories of the century 1954 barry atwater in the gunfight at the ok corral cbs tv you are there nov 6 1955 kirk douglas in gunfight at the ok corral 1957 with burt lancaster as wyatt earp douglas fowley in the life and legend of wyatt earp with hugh o'brien as wyatt earp 1955 to 1961 myron healy in 10 episodes of the life and legend of wyatt earp arthur kennedy played holiday opposite james stewart as earp in director john ford's cheyenne autumn 1964 adam west in three different abc television series cold 45 lawman and sugarfoot gerald moore and peter breck each played holiday in the abc wb series maverick 1957 christopher dark in an episode of the nbc series bonanza 1963 martin landau in the episode doc holiday of the tv series tales of wells fargo 1959 anthony jacobs doctor who in the episode the gunfighters 1966 jason roberts in hour of the gun james garner played wyatt earp 1967 jack kelly in the high chaparral 1967 sam gilman in star trek episode specter of the gun 1968 stacy keach and doc 1971 bill fletcher in two episodes of the tv series alias smith and jones which way to the ok corral 1971 and the 10 days that shook kid curry 1972 dennis hopper in wild times 1980 based on brian garfield's novel john mcclyam in brett maverick 1981 jeffrey demun in i married wyatt earp 1983 willie nelson in stagecoach 1986 Val Kilmer in Tombstone, 1993, Dennis Quaid in Wyatt Earp, 1994, Randy Quaid in Purgatory, 1999, Warren Stevens in the episode Doc Holliday's Gold Bars of the syndicated Western series, Death Valley Days, 1966, Shane O'Loughlin in Legends and Lies, The Real West on the Fox News Channel series that explores famous figures from the American West, Tim Rosen in the sci-fi TV series Winona Earp, 2016, Jeremy Renner in Untitled Doc Holliday biopic, TBA, based on Mary Doria Russell's books equals 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 in fiction equals 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 epitaph and novel of the OK Corral by Mary Doria Russell 2015 ISBN 9780062198761 A Wicked Little Town book one of the Doc Holiday series by Elena Sandage 2013 ISBN 9780992807009 Southern Sun The Saga of Doc Holiday by Victoria Wilcox 2013 ISBN 9781908 483553 Holiday Nate Bowden and Doug Dabbs 2012 ISBN 9781934964651 Doc a novel by Mary Doria Russell 2011 ISBN 9781400068043 Merkaba Rider The Mensch with No Name by Edward M Erdelic a novel in the Weird West Genre 2010 ISBN 9781615721900 The Bundline Special by Mike Resnick 2010 ISBN 9781616142490 Territory by Emma Bull 2007 ISBN 9780812548365 The Last Ride of German Freddy by Walter John Williams and Novella in Worlds That Were 2005 ISBN 9781101212639 The Once and Future Dentist by D Richard Pierce 2005 Audio published by Escape Pod Bucking the Tiger a novel by Bruce Olds 2002 ISBN 9780312420246 The Fourth Horseman by Rand Andy Lee Eikhoff, 1998 ISBN 0-312-85301-7, Deadlands a tabletop role-playing game produced by Pinnacle Entertainment Group in Law Dogs, 1996, ISBN 978-1-889546-26-1, Wild Times by Brian Garfield, 1978 ISBN 978-0-671-24374-6.
6, The Last Kind Word Saloon by Larry McMurtry, 2014 ISBN 978-0-87140-786-3, At Gravesend by Janine Frost, 2008 ISBN 978-0061583070, equals 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 in song equals equals equals, Linwood, written and performed by John Chandler on the Grand Dame of the Rockies, Songs of the Hotel Colorado and the Roaring Fork Valley, winner of the 2009 Western Writers of America Spur Award for Best Song, Danish metal band Volbeat performs the song Doc Holiday on their album Outlaw Gentlemen and Shady Ladies. The song Doc Holiday is featured on the 2010 album Suffocation by Latent Anxiety. The band Doc Holiday. The band Doc Holiday takes the shotgun. The song Tombstones from the album Larry Keel Experience written by Larry Keel. The song Tombstone by Swedish power metal band Civil War. Equals equals references equals 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 further reading equals equals Bell, Bob Bose. The Illustrated Life and Times of Doc Holiday. Phoenix, TriStar Bose Publications, 1994, DeMattos, Jack. Gunfighters of the Real West, Doc Holiday, Real West, January 1982, Johns, Pat, The Frontier World of Doc Holiday, Faro Dealer from Dallas to Deadwood, New York, Hastings House Publishers, Inc., 1957, Kirkpatrick, J.R., Doc Holiday's Missing Grave, True West, October, 1990, Lynch, Sylvia D., 1995, Aristocracy's Outlaw, The Doc Holiday Story, Tennessee Iris Press, ISBN 0-9645781-0-7, Marks, Paula Mitchell, and Die in the West, The Story of the OK, Corral Gunfight, New York, William Morrow and Company, Inc., 1989 ISBN 0-688-07288-7, Masterson, W.B., Bat, Famous Gunfighters of the Western Frontier, Doc, Holiday, Human Life Magazine, Volume, 5, No. 2, May, 1907, Myers, John Myers, Doc Holiday, Boston, Little, Brown and Company, 1955, Palm Quist, Robert F., Goodbye Old Friend, Real West, May, 1979, Roberts, Gary L., The Fremont Street Fiasco, True West, July 1988, Roberts, Gary L., 2006, Doc Holiday, The Life and Legend, John Wiley and Sons, Inc., ISBN 0-471-26291-9, Tanner, Karen Holiday, 1998, Doc Holiday, A Family Portrait, University of Oklahoma Press, ISBN 978-0-8061-3320-1, equals equals external links equals equals, kansasheritage.org, John Henry Holiday Family History, TomStoneTimes.com, Where's Doc, DocAncestry.com, Holiday Information, Photos and Genealogy from Spalding County, Georgia Gen Web, John Henry Doc Holiday, Western Lawman, Find a Grave, January 1, 2001, Retrieved September 2, 2012.